I feel so fortunate that not only is Trey Matthews the supplier of the seafood for the restaurant, he's also my friend, so he's gonna make sure that I get the good stuff all the time. So I'm actually making a beef wellington with an oyster pate. But before we get started, I wanna show you how to shuck an oyster. We're just gonna take them out and you wanna make sure that you have either an oyster glove or a rag. I kinda like to have mine down on something and this gives me better control if I do it this way. And we're gonna take our oyster and on this end, there's a small little crack. And that little crack will allow you to get your oyster knife down in there. And once you get it in there, turn your knife sideways. And that will open up your oyster. Ooh, it looks so good. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let's move back down here to our beef tenderloin. And I've got a pan that's getting hot here. And I'm gonna put a little olive oil and butter because the butter by itself might burn a little bit. And I'm gonna sit that off for a second. Ooh, that butter's popping. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to coat our meat with a little olive oil. And then I'm gonna encrust it with just salt and black pepper. And I'm not gonna be shy with my salt because it's gonna make a nice crust for us. Now we're just gonna coat it good with pepper all the way around. Okay, we've got our meat ready for the pan. Our pan is nice and hot. And we're just gonna stick it in there. And we're gonna sear it all over. And it's smelling so good already. We don't wanna get him too done because when I slice into him, I want him to be nice and red. And I'm gonna move him right there. All right, to all the good seasoning and stuff that came off of him, I'm gonna add some mushrooms and shallots and some fresh garlic. And I'm just gonna saute that in all that good juice that came out of our meat. It's getting right though, it smells so yummy. So we're gonna take our drained oysters and throw them over in here. And we're just gonna saute those oysters until they get that kind of opaque look. And it doesn't take long at all to cook an oyster. So this is gonna take just a second. They're already starting to curl up on me. All right, so those are going along and we're gonna add about one tablespoon of sherry. And that's gonna help deglaze our pan. And you'll wanna use a good sherry, uh, not necessarily a cooking sherry. All right, it looks like our oysters are just about to get there. All right, that's ready. And we're gonna come over here to our food processor and we're gonna throw in some cracker crumbs. And I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna take our oysters and add them in with our cracker crumbs. Just like that. Yum. All right, now I'm gonna use the pulser on this because it won't take much to process it to the point that we're gonna need it. Okay. Now we're just gonna take our pate and we're gonna drain it using some cheesecloth because we want this nice and stiff. And I'm just gonna put this right in there. It's at a wonderful consistency. While y'all were gone, I got everything cleaned up and I was even able to go ahead and roll out our puff pastry for our beef wellington. It's a great product that you can find in the grocery store uh, in the frozen food section. And all I'm gonna do is take our pate and I'm gonna spread it around and we're just gonna kinda run him out so that when we put our meat on there, it's about the same size and shape as the meat. And we're just gonna do it even. All right, now we're gonna take our meat and I'm gonna put the pretty side down. Just like that. All right, now I'm just gonna dampen that edge with a little water using my fingers just like that. Then I'm gonna just Pull this over so that it will seal. I'm gonna kinda do a little tuck here. Pull that right up there. 
press him down so that I know that he's good and sealed. All right, now, I've lightly greased my cookie sheet, and I'm gonna transfer him very gently. And I've got an egg and a little bit of water beaten up right here. So we're just gonna brush him all over so that every part that your guest sees will have that sheen to it. Your puff pastry actually comes packaged, two big sheets. So I've used some of it to do us some little cutouts because this is just so pretty to just put a little design on it. You could use a cookie cutter. So this just makes it look like you've gone to a little bit more trouble than you actually have. So now we're gonna go back and just pat that because we want the leaves or whatever you decide to do to be as pretty and as shiny as the rest of your beef wellington. And while he's cooking, we're gonna move on down here and start our pie. Oh, look how good that looks. In that one goes for about 15 or 20 minutes, and I've actually got another one ready in the other oven, and I'm gonna pull it out because this really needs to sit and rest for 10 or 15 minutes before you cut it. So we're gonna take him out. It looks really, really good. Now you can cook this anywhere from 350 to 450. Mm -hmm.